Now, many of us say we have distractions. That's one of the excuses. I have too many distractions. But it doesn't stop there. Good news for those of us who have distractions. The reason is why it's good news is distractions point us to the direction of necessary purification that God wants to achieve in our souls. So distractions can be from Satan, in which case we just brush it off like a fly and get back to prayer. But if we are sensitive, we may understand God is trying to point us in the direction of purification. And Thomas A. Kempis says this, temptations are profitable to a man because in them he is purified, instructed, and humbled. We should thank God for some of our temptations. We should thank God for some of our distractions. The reason is if we didn't have any distractions, we would not be tested in faith. And we'll end up very proud people. We'll be ending up having great, great times of prayer, but we'll be ending up very, very proud, not realizing our sinful, sinfulness and weakness. So John of the Cross writes, one must cast out all attachments if he wishes, wishes to climb the spiritual ladder. I've highlighted some words here. One must, all, and if. So we may be running short of time. This is a different topic by itself. But I want to quickly run through these attachments. Let's see uh, if God is speaking to any of us. It's time to ask God. Maybe this attachment is causing my distraction. It's all related in, in a very deep way, it's related. Material goods, some of us are think, th thinking about property. It's not a sin, of course, to think about it, but uh, if we have an identity in that, if we have a security in that, then the security in God takes a back seat. Property, bank balance, uh, articles, maybe spiritual articles, maybe that beautiful rosary from Holy Land, or maybe some beautiful crucifix somebody lent you. Are we willing to let go of these at the drop of a hat? if God says so. Nothing wrong with keeping them. Moral good, some of us feel work is worship, good work is worship. So I'm doing charity, I'm, doing, I'm helping the poor, I'm helping the needy, so I don't need to do personal prayer. Why work is worship? That's ab absolute deception. Work can never be worship, however good that work may be. And some of us have our identity in, in uh, the spiritual goods and, and supernatural goods, gift of healing, prophecy, visions, now, we need all of this, but it, it can also lead to a lot of pride. And if God says, stop, are we willing to stop at the drop of a hat? So it's that element of detachment which, uh, which, which drives us into a deeper personal prayer life. On the right side, now the danger here is these attachments are not sinful. If it is sinful, it's packaged as sin, the work of the enemy. We, we, we know we have to let go of it. But since it's not sinful, it becomes a little more dangerous because sometimes it may skip our awareness. Sometimes, are we overspending time with certain people? Not necessarily sinful people. Are we overspending time at the compromise of our personal prayer life? Are we getting too close to people in such a way that our gospel values are compromised? Some of us have identity in work, certificates, events, hobbies. Once somebody told me, they were so disappointed, they went to the U he went to the US, he got himself a master's degree, then he came back, but he couldn't find a job in spite of that master's degree. And there were others like him who without that master's, who just had a bachelor's, they could get a job. And then when I questioned him about his identity, he said he was not really depending on God, he was depending more on the certificate. And irrespective of all our abilities, irrespective of all our achievements, God has to be the center of it. Some of us spend more time in front of the mirror, especially when before going, for going to church, and more time in front of the mirror looking at ourselves, wondering what people will think about how we look, imagining the praises of people saying, you know, you look so good, you look so beautiful, you look so handsome. Sometimes we imagine all of this in advance, and that becomes an attachment. Knowledge, ideas, some of us grow in our experience. Some person may say, I'm 10 years experience in this field. I'm 20 years experience in this field. So that confidence in getting a job also is even more. They depend more on their experience than on God. Now, Jesus wants us, wants us to move into a spiritual zone of total nothingness, total abandonment, realizing that we are absolutely nothing without him. Now, in the process of this purification, we need to let go of some of these attachments proactively. 
So temptations can be good, temptations can be bad. Until a man is purged of his attachments, he will not be able, he will not be equipped to possess God. So if we are looking to grow in our prayer life, there's a condition here. We have to be here. We have to work proactively with God, with the Holy Spirit, and let go of these attachments. So what will you choose? If we choose one way, we'll, have, we'll continue on our personal prayer life. We'll continue as good, nice, charitable people. But we will not be spiritual people. And we will continue having distractions to the extent that we have these attachments. <laughs>